The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome to probably a podcast in, you guessed it, another one of my homes, okay? <laughs> because studios are just, those are tough. Um, we have a, do have a studio podcast coming up, but for this one, we wanted to bring the friends into my home. Plus, I'm about to fucking not live here anymore, so we gotta, we gotta use all of this shit up while we can. Sit in all the chairs, rub our feet on all the carpets. Although, Alex, in New York, you take your shoes off, yes. Everyone does that. Yeah, and then I felt like a real loser because I didn't read the room when I got here and you Bitch. guys both had your shoes off. No, 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 no. I you, I just did that because I haven't left my house today. By the way, Alex Bennett, Hello. absolute <laughs> dreamboat. Alex Bennett, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for coming on. She pleasure is a podcaster, amazing person. I cannot wait to dive into more about you, but um, I'm really bad at intro. So like, we're just going to call you podcast extraordinaire and lovely human being. That will do. That'll do. Right? That I yeah. I don't. We don't need an intro. Um. So New York is a thing, which makes sense, obviously, because you're like walking around in, in like fucking pee and poop and like just just filth, right? Like rats. But everyone takes their shoes off. So I, being from the south, like I didn't fucking know that, and I didn't grow up in like a, a home where my mom made us take the shoes off. Like that just wasn't a thing either. So I was walking in, and people were like, "Oh." Do you mind taking your shoes off? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Not really thinking anything of it. Then going into another home and people were like, oh, sorry. I, I hate to be this person, but do you mind taking your shoes off? And then it finally clicked. I was like, oh, everyone does this. Like, you're supposed to do it everywhere. I'm like, that is so foreign to me. I had the same experience. Oklahoma never took a shoe. If you if you asked me growing up to take my shoes off, I was like, okay. Yeah. It's a, yes. Settle down. You're like, relax. It's fine. With your new car. Come on. Rooms it's, to go everywhere in here. What were we taking our shoes off for? Nobody. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I would wear my shoes everywhere. And then right. I, got, I had the same thing as you. But answer me this honestly. Okay. Honest to God. Because okay. I walked in and you and Courtney both had your shoes on. And I still had mine. Are Did, you, you shoes off. I had mine on. And then this is what I do. And you do the same thing. We both go, no, it's really fine. But we actually do take our shoes off. I, I t did. Are you asking if I knew, like was noticing you took yours off? Because a second ago, I looked at her socks and thought her cowboy boots are cute. Like you could like the, the cowboy boots might even. Do they show in the shot, Courtney? Like, should you put them back on? No, but we don't want them on the rug. The I rug is nice. But I'm telling you, I don't have shoes on because I haven't left my apartment this morning. Like I, I would probably if I had walked in in shoes, the shoes would still be on. Really? Yeah. But then if I, no, so in my apartment, I take my shoes off okay. always because we walk through, I watch dogs shit on the side. It's nasty. And then I walk through it. It's gross. The next day. Mm -hmm. But it's gone. You know, the, the shit's not there anymore, but I walked in the spot where they did. Right. So my shoes have it on there. Yeah. So in my apartment, I do take my shoes off and so does my husband. Uh -huh. And then somebody will come over and they won't, they'll, they'll be a friend from home and they won't take them off and then they'll notice ours are off. Uh -huh. And they'll be like, should I take my shoes off? And I'll go, it's okay. I do that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I do that. It's like, no, but let's take I them that. off. And, and I will be honest with you, I do that. And you're right in my head. I'm like, but there's so much poop. Yeah, but but the poop. Pee. But the poop. Um, James also got poop on this carpet. And I was like, we were only dating. <laughs> Courtney's sitting on the carpet. She's like, oh, if where? <laughs> where do you think? He got it. Um, I. It was one of those moments where like he had just gotten to New York. I think I had like gone through this whole like spiel about shoes. And he was like, oh, how funny. Yeah, it's kind of like that in London too. And then yeah, he stepped. He got dog poop on the carpet. And he was like, oh, that couldn't have been me. There's no way. And then like lifted his shoe up that literally had shit all over it. And he was like, oh no and I was like mm, get it off it's so nasty it's so nasty <laughs> did he get it off he got it clearly got it, it off he did it came off I was very impressed can I tell you something about him yeah I would hear you impersonate him uh -huh. and I thought no <laughs> not actually like he doesn't he also talks like we do but then does an accent for fake right and then I met him and I was like, he's not, it's, oh, it's not for play play. No, it's really he how he really talks. He talks like that. And he says my impersonation, impersonation of him is terrible, but like it fucking sounds just like him. I think it's 70%. It's 70% there. I'll take that and run with it. He is so lovely. Is that Do the you, word? He Lo is. Lovely. He's, he's so lovely. I agree. Very Alex nice. um, met James. So in Miami for New Year's, we found out we were there at the same time. Also, Graham, her husband was there, which we're going to delve into everything. Just marriage not really um I don't know why I said that but I do have a couple questions about Graham on here okay. um God bless you Graham but the whole podcast isn't about you but um I he's like perfect this is a break perfect do you talk about Graham a lot on your podcast yes yeah poor Graham's sex life just goes but he doesn't have social media so he doesn't know oh that's nice yeah so he's kind of like 
out of sight, out of mind. Didn't know what you said. Ignorance is bliss really do be a thing too. You know it's I mean? a total I'm not thing. calling Graham ignorant, but like, you know, just like the ignorance of just like not knowing. You're just like, perfect. Did you talk about your sex life? So I, my podcast when it first started was literally every sexual encounter of my whole entire life to the point that I like asked my parents not to listen to it. I was like, listen, it's going to be like my little secret thing that you guys don't listen to. Okay. Because just, just like, you can't, we can't do that. And so, um, they were like, yeah, I totally understand. And I, I was like, you obviously can listen to it if you want to, but like, then you do still have to see me at Christmas and Thanksgiving. And I just don't want you to, to know about like butt stuff you know and so she's like okay I'm not gonna listen to that which actually is sad because now sometimes they still ask me like can I listen to this episode and I'm like you guys can listen to every episode I'm not really like detailing like I'll say I had a one-night stand which like my parents are not like you know shocked a gasp <laughs> Sherry <laughs> Kay's like oh no <laughs> and they're like yeah, checks out um but no I it used to be fully 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 graphically about sex right and then um you know you this is gonna sound crazy but you're on our sex stories I, I don't be having like that much random sex anymore. So, you know, it's like if, if, if something is pertinent to a conversation or a story, I would talk about it, but I don't just like straight up talk about me and James sex life, but it's not like off limits. It's not like by any means, like when he was first on one of the main questions, like what's your favorite position? And me and James were like, you know, missionary really underrated, really just <laughs> think it's like a great position, but like, it's, it's not like I wouldn't go in depth about like a certain time, unless I asked his permission and it like was pertinent to the conversation, but so if it's relevant, yes. Yeah, maybe. And I would, and I think I would, because he is just like a bit posh. I think I would ask him, be like, hey, I was going to talk about this on the podcast. Is that okay? Yeah. Or most likely me, I'd be like, hey, I talked about this on the podcast. Is it okay? But I keep it in there. I don't have producer Courtney cut it. <laughs> Do like, I need to cut that? <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, like no. Ask for forgiveness instead of permission is usually my route. But yeah. But you go, you go all in. Because your mom was saying whenever I was on. So Alex, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, Alex has a podcast on Barstool. Never have I ever been more excited than whenever I got asked to be on your mom's pod, which I thought you guys did together at first. But do, do, you, do you not do the podcast together? We did do it together. Mm -hmm. Then we did just her. Now we do her short form videos. Nice. Okay. So yeah. Progression. I love it. It's the, the evolution of... Him, it was not love. a clear path yeah, yeah but was... she can I tell you this really quickly yes um because everyone asks me this about you okay. if you are how you see because you give everyone a very large window you made a joke the other day on your story you were like me not skinny not fat and Meghan Markle oh, all yeah. divulging everything yeah I would, would literally was like me not skinny not fat who's an amazing podcaster too and myself are the least mysterious people I know like I will tell you because someone's like are you secretly engaged I was like bitch I will fucking tell y'all <laughs> <laughs> I tell y'all everything y'all know i have hemorrhoids like i tell you everything so no i'm not mysterious so yes the, the window is large <laughs> the window you give but you really like even the way to the to, down to how you handle things like with friends yeah yeah i feel like you tell everything mm -hmm. and so everyone was like my dms are like is she how she seems on social media and i was relieved relieved to say because yeah. it doesn't always happen exactly no, exactly like you are that's comforting i i wonder because i i'm like you i've met i have met so many people so many celebs so many <laughs> people crime. no but like you meet these like influencers in the world that we're in and like it, it, i i think to myself like aren't they just exhausted because what i see on social media and what i i just met at the club or what i just met at a dinner and, and you know i'll give the benefit of the doubt some of these girls i've met several times and i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah see I would, it's not a one-off. You definitely aren't the way you are on social media. For mm -hmm. sure, for sure you're not. So it is interesting because I wonder, are they not just exhausted of like doing the, the two thing? And I know some girls are like, my social media is a persona, whatever, which totally get that and that's fine and well and good. But like, I just, I just feel like that, that does seem exhausting. Well, in yours, uh, I do see that some are personas, but yours, I was like, probably isn't because the basis of it is that you're so real. Like you're often saying that. That would be that. crazy if it was fake though, right? Because I can't stand a bitch. It's like, I'm so real. And then they're not. You're like, that is what you're like basing your whole like thing on being real and you're not being real. So that yeah. would be, I would, I would venture to say if you'd met me and I wasn't like that, you'd be like, this fish annoys me. Oh, I'd have to out <laughs> yeah. it. I'd have to yeah, be like, you'd, you'd have all right, to, right? The craziest thing happened. I met her and it wasn't right. It wasn't what we all oh thought. Oh my God. I just got the chills. That is so scary. Imagine if someone met me and was like, I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you can have an off day, but yeah, yeah, I can yeah. confidently say now I'm like, no, it's the same person. Yay. Okay. That makes me very happy. Thrilled, thrilled to announce. Yes. Good okay. job. Confirmed. Um, yeah. So you have a podcast called mean girls on barstool. Um, I was asked to be on your mom's podcast. I was very excited. I walk in the room. Alex is like the fucking nicest, kindest person. First of all, I was like, like internally 
geeking out to like be asked on a Barstool podcast and must have asked like my close friends on Instagram and slash all my friends. And I'm like, okay, what do I wear? I don't want to look like, I'm trying too hard, but I want to look like cool girl or down. I want to look like, like hot girl, cool girl, try hard and less cool girl. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up. Just put on an outfit and go. And I'm like, okay. But when I walked in, you just made me feel so special and so cool to be there. So it didn't even matter what I was wearing because I just felt instantly cool when I got there. And then your mom's podcast was great. And then you have your podcast, Mean Girls, which people want to know two things. And we'll just start from the top. And I, I, I'm sure you could like Google this, guys. But just in case you want to just hear it from the horse's mouth. That's not a nice thing to say. Is that, the, is that the phrase? I'm flattered to be called a horse. Is that the phrase from the horse's mouth? Yes. Right. It means like from... From the person who said it? The person, yeah. Right? Okay, great. The horse. Um, so from the horse's mouth, what uh how'd you get your job at Barstool? Everyone's curious because that's a pretty big deal and really cool. And um tell me about your mean girl podcast and how it came to fruition. Okay, the way I got my job at Barstool was in the middle of the pandemic, I had a marketing job. Okay. And I was like, this isn't what I really want to do forever. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, right? But I'm gonna quit this and I'm gonna go home to Oklahoma and I'm just gonna stay at home in my childhood bedroom for a week. Yeah, because that's always where I reset. And it was during the pandemic, so who the fuck didn't live at home? Right. I was like, I not wasn't wasn't really like you're moving home. Like everyone fucking moved. I, I went home. Yeah. And I had a I had a home in Nashville, and I was like, Mom, I'm coming to stay with you on the lake. And she was like, There's a pandemic going on. I was like, Shh, get out of here, girl. Let me do my thing, Mom. I'm coming over. Yeah. I want to come 100%. over. And I, you know what I want to do that I'll never get to do ever again is sit at home on a Tuesday at noon with my mom and dad. Yes. Yes. So I but before I did that, I dyed the bottom part of my hair blue. Like okay. Dark, dark, dark blue. I've got to see a photo of this. I don't think I've seen a photo of this it was before. Awesome. I loved it, but okay. I knew my mom would hate it. Uh huh. So I'm on my way home and I'm like, Dad, do me a solid. When I walk in the door, film mom's reaction. She's going to hate it. I also know your mom and I, your mom gives Sharon K vibes, which is my mom. And my mom would also hate if I dyed my hair blue. Hey, they're, they're like, they're just like, yes. It takes away from your mm -hmm, face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're too pretty. For Honey, that. you're just, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I feel like one of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have literally no idea what adventures are in store for you. I mean, I obviously know this is true because if you told me last year all the things that I would end up doing, and all the people I'd end up meeting, and all the places I would go in 2022, I would not have believed you. And what better way to prepare for 2023's adventures than learning a new language? I used to think that sounded like such a daunting task. But then... I found Babbel and Babbel makes it fun and exciting. You don't feel like you're in a boring classroom learning a language. You get these addictively fun and kind of easy somehow bite-sized language lessons that make you feel confident in learning something as different as a whole new language. Obviously, others agree with me because it's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. I love using Babbel because these lessons, which by the way, you legit only need like 10 minutes for, were created by actual language teachers and experts. And I've used other apps before and you can totally tell that it was all made by like an AI. And that is something that I just like could legit not grasp at all. With Babbel, even the voice components that you hear in the lessons are voiced by actual native speakers, not some weird computer-generated voice. You can choose from 14 different languages. I'm currently learning Spanish, and they have like a ton of different ways to learn outside of just the lessons. They've got like games, podcasts, stories. They even have these live classes if you want to shake things up a bit. It also has a 20-day money-back guarantee, which I think is great. Right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash probably. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash probably for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, it's language for life. My hair's too long, everything. So right. I walk in the door and she's like, she gave me everything I needed. I didn't even know I needed it, but she was standing on a zebra rug. Okay. So PETA people were like, is that a real zebra? And she's like an Oklahoma and like I have blue hair. And right. so everyone, it just, all cylinders were firing. Yes. And I'm like, there's this app called TikTok. I'm going to upload it on that. Right. And that'll be funny. And it was fresh. 2020, I mean, was like the year when TikTok boomed. It was the time I yep. put it up. I didn't check it for like four days and mm -hmm. I got back on there and I was like, I think this is like, it had like 800,000 views. And I was wow. Like, I was like, I don't even have like, that was like, that's so cool. That's crazy. That's but a lot. I was like, let me see if I can do another one. Okay. So I did another one with my mom and I was like, all right. And I don't even think about it really. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, this is kind of fun because you know what was fun about it? People were messaging me 
I don't have a very good relationship with my mom. So watching yours makes me feel happy. I love that. I, lo- I, I get messages like that when I go home to my family and it like makes me want to like share my family more just because the like response just makes me feel like they, they feel the love through the love I'm feeling, which is just like always a good feeling. It's so much better yeah. than like the marketing job. Right, you right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. I, the, the internet has some assholes on it, but mainly there's a lot of good. A hundred percent. So I was like, okay, interesting. So then I didn't do anything about it. So three months go by and Dave Portnoy, who's the founder of Barstool, puts Mm -hmm. up this tweet because Alex Cooper had just left Barstool, went to Spotify, got the bag, right? We're all like, go get him. Get the bag. She had Call Her Daddy, still has Call Her Daddy. And so he says Barstool has produced, it's this, I'm paraphrasing, Barstool has produced the highest two paid female podcasters in the history of podcasters. Who's next? Because they're the launch pad, right? Right, right, right. Marbles, they had Alex. They yes, both went I on. I forgot about Jenna Marbles. Yes. She was a barstool girl. Did not realize that. Okay. So he says, who's next in the tweet? And one of my friends sent it to me. It was like, it'd be so funny. I'm like, yeah. You lied. And I was like, well, no one will see this, but I'll make No it. one sent me that tweet, by the way. Thanks fucking friends. What's okay. wrong with everyone in Shannon's life that no one Rude. sent her that? Um, Rude. So I make a pitch video with my mom. I call it, call your mommy. And it's like total This opposite. is so great. Also, the fact that you had the background in marketing, fantastic. You're like, I'm going to make a pitch video. I'd be like, I'm going to tweet them back. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I'll respond and say me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. And I would. <laughs> fuck. I'm like, he'll do the digging. The fuck? Okay. He'll sorry. find he, me. He'll, he'll find, do it. He'll find me. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to work anywhere. But if I'm going to work somewhere, it's yes. going to be Barstool because they'll let me be myself. Totally. Probably. <laughs> so, and they don't. I was like, fuck, maybe. I don't know. Like, maybe they suck. But I think they're cool. So I I make this pitch video of my mom who's like, is it Port? What What is his last name? And I'm like, it's Portnoy. She's so serious too. She's like, Kim's why are so we serious. doing She's like, I don't want a job. <laughs> I'm like, well, I do. And guess how I'm getting I it. I fucking love Kim. She goes by content Kim, by the way. And it's just pure content spewing at her mouth at all times. Con- I love it. And she doesn't even know it. She doesn't realize it. She's terrible at her job. It's amazing. Horrible at making content. But she's like, um... I don't want to work. And I'm like, yeah, but I, this blonde thing doesn't set, I, no, nothing sets me apart. Yeah. I'm about as boring and original. Stop. Like, I'm just like, what's, what's interesting? Mom, you're interesting. Yes. So she's in the video with me and she's like, you're not going to get this job and we are not moving to New York. So I upgrade to LinkedIn premium. I find everybody with the Barstool email address. I send it to 25 people and I'm like, somebody see it. I am so impressed by you. Well, I'm guy, I, people listening, this is with any job, not just Barstool, like fucking smart tactic. And the thing was, it's funny that we joke because I, how we're like, they'll find me. And I think a lot of people think that. Uh, I mean, I wasn't being funny. Like I really would have, I would have been like, I'll respond and be like me. And then he'll click on my profile. He'll see some of my stuff. It'll be fun. Like, they're not fucking doing that. They have a, they, Dave Portnoy is probably pretty fucking busy. You know what I mean? He's not going to be like, okay, well, she said me. So let me click on her profile. Dig, dig a little bit. Like, no, no, you got to get, no, in front. you got to get in front. Okay. I, <laughs> That's I learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's, we can joke about it because you are where you are. So clearly, you know something. Well, but it's that, So that's how I did it. So then I had to inter- it happened very quickly. They, I FaceTimed with Dave. And the best question he asked me was, where all did you apply? And I said, just here. Love. And he, and he was like, I like. So then, I mean, it was like two weeks. And I was like moving from LA yeah, to New yeah. York. That was it. You're all in. Oh my God, I love. So he just offered you a job. He's like, look, you're coming. This is great. And your mom was like, I have a job and I have to move to New York. Yes. And did Dave say you had to move to New York for it? And you were like, no problem. He said, you do not have to move to New York. You can clearly create this kind of content anywhere. However, we do see a lot of people thrive better. Like in the office, there's nothing better than being in the office, interacting with people. I'm going to give you guys the, uh, my personal like uh, story about going to the Barstool office. And then you can tell me what it's like to go to the Barstool office every day. When yeah. I walked in, um, someone that was holding sub sandwiches was loudly chasing a little person and then um they were just like scrambling all around the office i i I really was like is this a part of a bit people were chasing with cameras i was like i must have walked in on something like really important like maybe they're filming something today that i didn't know about and then yeah no you were like oh that just that's a thing that happens um then everyone's desk everyone's desk is just covered it like piled high with like random merch items or like things that you would like win at a fair I feel mm-hmm. like just like knickknacks like things things that like there's no way they use those things they're just like sitting there and then like everyone was just being like outwardly just really fucking funny and then of course people were working but and and then like you recognize all the faces because I'm like a big fan of bar stool content so I was like oh my god that's so and so they're literally just sitting right there working that's fucking crazy and then yeah all the podcasts are going on and I just looked at you and was like I think every time I saw 
a, a footage of what what goes on in the barstool office i always thought it was a bit like i always thought like obviously this is like a workspace so it's a, this isn't like what really happens here and then truly and i was on only there for like an hour i was like this is absolutely not a bit like this is how their office is it's like a fucking frat house there's like basketball hoops everywhere people are just like shooting there's like a bar i mean it's it's fucking iconic first of all i just really i enjoyed it but i was like this is not a bit and probably when the little guy, Zaw, was running and being chased by the guy with the sub. Yes. Nobody's flinching. Like, no, no, no. No one was. By the way, no one No one was like, hey, what's going on here? We're trying to work here. Everyone was just like, duh, 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 like just on their laptop. I think the biggest thing that gets lost uh -huh. is, well, one, people think it's a, we're joking yeah, sometimes. Yeah, thought it was a bit real. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. No, and it was, it was beautiful to see. It made me, like, I think I would be very, very creative in a, in a setting like that. I think, I think I would, like you said, Dave said, get more, co like, creative content done in a setting that's, but also, like, my brain is so fucking ADD. Like, that's how it works. Like, I'm like, oh, fun, cool, cool, idea, idea, idea. Like, versus just sitting in, like, a beautiful acrylic office. Well, and then if you need somebody, you're like, I just thought of something, but I need a person to be in it with. You have 20. So true, and everyone's you're willing. Like God, and that is all the barstool stuff I see where they're like, hey, eat this fucking fiery pepper or rub it on your butt. And people are like, oh, okay, do I have to do this again? <laughs> like, I'm going to do it. Okay, fine. Yeah, you're everyone like, says yes. They're like, sure. You never thought. You're like, I'm like, sometimes I'll be there and I'm taking a shot of um, vodka with Arby's french fries in it. And you're just like, <laughs> why? But I'm like, when do I ever get? I'm like, this is what I wanted to do. No, it's great. That makes me really happy for you because it just seems like a really fun place to be. It's a happy place to be. It sounds like it. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized by a horribly fitted bra. Like memories unlocked immediately of younger Shannon trying desperately to find a bra that didn't look and feel like it was trying to trap her little tots in a steel cage. And listen, I'm a member of the itty bitty titty committee and I still feel this struggle. Like no one is safe, okay? But gone are those days, thank the Lord, because Third Love has created the most magically fitting bras ever. You guys, I'm serious. Specifically, their 24-7 classic t-shirt bra. It is chef's kiss. Like when I have a perfect little white tee and I want that perfect thing to go underneath it, they've done just that. It doesn't show at all. Like it's literally invisible under your clothes and the straps stay put because I can't stand when you're yanking at those things all day. They have legit over 60 sizes so everyone can find their fit. And my favorite thing about Third Love is that they come in half sizes. Because even my little gals, they need that little extra sizing option. Honestly, I've always been like right in between a size. So this is really, really amazing for people that are struggling with that. Also, there's nothing better than just feeling confident in your clothes because your bra actually fits you underneath them. So... They've got a fitting room quiz that has helped over 20 million women find their true bra size. Third Love also, by the way, is the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S., partnering with organizations to donate over 50 million worth of bras to help people in need. I love, 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 love that about them. So ladies, it's time to ditch the bad bras and get one that makes you look and feel great. Upgrade your bra today and get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash probably. That's 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash probably. Mean Girls Pod was secondary after your mom's pod. And how did you meet Jordan? So Jordan and I, we called it our freshman class because we all came in at the same time. Okay. Stool. They did like a hiring year, I guess. Love. Okay. Yeah. So we were in, there was five of us and Jordan and I did not like each other at all. I really? Mean, yes. Two Midwesterners just clashing. Oh, okay. I was like, we both thought each other were too nice. So we were like, they're fake. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I had the same perception of each other. There's five of us were on the outs and <laughs> we're like, fuck that person. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Could you tell that you both were like, like were nice to each other, but didn't like, didn't fuck with each other? Very obvious. Because you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Right, right, right. And we got... Where is she from, by the way? She's from Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota. Min Minnesota. And I'm from Oklahoma. And so it just was not a good mix. And so we got in a little... We got ourselves in a pickle. Okay. Together. You don't have... I, I know the story and you can just say you were just... You just got yourself into a pickle talking about someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we got into... We got in a classic pickle. Let me tell you what I be doing all the time. Getting into pickles about people I talk about. Who know? You know, it's it's always going to be a thing. It, I'm sure you could find it if you wanted to find it, but we don't need to like rehash it. I, I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. And, and so we got called Mean Girls by Dave. Okay. And it was the so, best thing ever. Such a softie these days. It was... <laughs> Like me? You guys are, no, Dave, oh. you, you're just mean girls. We were, I was like, damn. So 
we get called that and we're on the Dave Portnoy show. And so afterwards, because it was Jordan and I that had made a video together. Right. And so we we leave and the, this guy named Gaz, who you met in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like the head of, he's the mastermind of some of these things. And so he's like, you two should do a podcast together. Right. And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> not me and her we shouldn't not me and her <laughs> that is so imagine not liking someone at like work right but then the m master macho man at work like the big dog at work is like you know who you should do a podcast with this guy and you're so excited that the top dog at your work thought you should create a new podcast and like believes in you but you're like with her it's literally like a classic fucking sitcom you're like no not with her. Not with her. Funny. And she's thinking it too. And she's the one that has to relay the message to me. I remember we're sitting in this conference room. She's like, listen, we don't have to do this. But they did say mm. we, we do have a, a good banter back and forth. Y'all are both like Siri. And you're like, mm, okay. Yeah, banter. Like, you're like, we actually don't like each other. That's why the banter seems funny. But it's not because you mean it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, okay. So I was like, you know what? And here's the thing. Everything at Barstool that happens that's good happened organically. Right. This is a classic organic. It's like your dream. Totally. And I'm like... Stuff that happens organically is always going to work out best. It just is. And you know what it taught me? What? Sometimes I think you have to bond with somebody in the first five minutes and that's how you know. And yeah. you're like, that's your person. And, it, and what I've learned, because I trust Jordan with every, she's the best business partner and best friend I could have asked for. Love. And so it's like, I didn't like you initially, but I had to give you a chance. And yeah. it taught me like right out of the gates. A lot of times I don't know about somebody and it's like, well, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. And you know, like pe people love to say like, I'm such a good judge of character. I read people so quickly and well, it's like, well, you can't possibly, well, humans are complex. You know what I mean? You can't possibly read or know someone right off the bat. Like even if they say something or do something that may, that's pretty blatant and obvious in your face, it, they're going to be more complex. There's going to be more layers to that person than the first thing they said to you. So like, yeah, I think it is a great lesson to like just give people a, a, a more of a chance than you originally wanted to. Yeah, and you quickly learn. You're like, we see this probably in our industry a lot. But I think the older we get in general, we see this. Who do you want to be in the trenches with? I'm like, I got a lot of people on a sunny day yep. I love to be with. But when it's raining, who's my girls? Facts. Raining outside, you're here. I'm here. Trenches, bitch. Exactly. Trenches. A classic trenches scenario. Cla a classic <laughs> trenches scenario. You heard it here first. No, that's good. That makes And so it was history. For, once you guys started working together, y'all were like, wait, we fuck with each other. Oh, my God. Tru the, the basis of it was just like trust. Yeah. So it's been the best. And that's why when somebody asks me my New Year's goals, yeah, yeah. I'm always like, none, zero. Couldn't have seen the last one coming. Yeah. Don't know what's happening this right. year. My goal is just keep if on, there's something, on. just I'll say yes. Yay. Okay. I love that. I actually was just talking about on my last podcast um, about New Year's. We were saying like I, people that are like, okay, what is your word for 2023? I'm like, I'm really not trying to be hateful. And if you do that, like, that's great. The vision boards, the words. But I'm like, shut the fuck up with the word just do all the do more than one word everyone's like my word for this year is present i'm like no do more more words more things just do you don't have to like pigeonhole yourself into like the one thing or the one goal because sometimes then you can be like kind of narrow-minded if you just have like one goal for the year you know i'm like have a bunch of them just like be all over the map just say yes to everything yeah and i kind of forget my goals by march do you F what the fuck by like january 10th i'm like if i didn't write them down and then i definitely lose that shit i'm like no i'm just not organized enough and uh, i i'm i've never been diagnosed but i can't imagine i don't have add like i can't add adhd one of the two like there's no fucking way i haven't had that i had this like moment in seventh grade where my mom uh, well i was just horrible in middle school horrible 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 my mom was like should we put you on medicine and I, it was just like the biggest like insult in the world like college shannon had she known would be like oh my god yes give us adderall because i was like stealing it from my friends in college you know but like seventh grade shannon was like appalled couldn't believe it. my mom would say that thought something was wrong with me and i was like i don't need any medicine so then like seriously i like told him i'm like i don't want it medicine i don't want to get tested and one of the questions actually someone asked me someone said have you, have, have you talked on your podcast before about being add maybe someone said ask alex about being add and embracing being unhinged i'm like has she like come out and said she's add or something oh yeah and unhinged unhinged okay so we're just gonna say since we both have not been diagnosed by doctors that we're just unhinged i was diagnosed oh you were okay they had me draw a photo of a house and they said <laughs> <"Draw."> sorry i'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh so hard in the mics. I just picked, this is what they do. Like, this is what they do to find out if you're ADD. They're like, draw, okay, I, I'm already interrupting. I'm sorry, but like, draw a picture of a house. I'm listening. <laughs> they said, draw a photo of a house. And by judging by the photo, like, you get distracted halfway through, you know, and it's like yeah. this house. And, and they give you five minutes and they say, just keep drawing the house. 
So afterwards, they told my mom, they were like, first of all, you did a good job because, you know, she did know about windows and shutters and things. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's a high dosage. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this bitch drew a horse. <laughs> yeah. she, she drew two beds of flowers. Fruits and vegetables we've never even seen before, and the house still isn't finished. So we're putting this we're putting this six year old on eighty milligrams, okay? Did she right out the gate? She'll be creative, but maybe a little bit of a problem. Yeah, I was that. I was just such a problem. Every report card I had said like she is so capable, but will <laughs> not apply herself. And then like I would get in just enough trouble that I'd be like, fine, and I like do the whole thing faster and better than everyone else, and they'd be like, did you? that see you can do it and I'm like Ugh, boring no not doing it anyways Jacob over here like I just like that was me like I just could not focus could not so like I, I venture to say I'm sure I have some sort of attention deficit disorder however like I just never I was so like perplexed at the idea of being put on medicine that I kind of which you know I've seen it affect a lot to each their own everyone has their own story I know people that are happily on Adderall and all these other like chemically you know inducing what are the words I'm using I'm not going to talk medical jargon I know a lot of people that are on fucking pills that absolutely help and aid them in their focus and that is great because they use it properly I just anytime I did Adderall in college because my friends had it or whatever I was just always abusing the fuck out of it which like you know a lot of people do but I always found it it made me if you can believe this more annoying like it made me it made me talk more it made me like ugh, it made me hyper fixate on things that like everyone was like, I don't know the word. And I'd be like, no, 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 you know the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And everyone's like, dude, I don't know. Like move on. And I just got, I don't know. I don't, Courtney can attest. Cause there's been times where I'm like, I'll just take an Adderall before this. And it's like one of the worst episodes ever. Cause one, if you can believe it, I just interrupt everyone the whole time. And two, I talk too much too fast. I can't focus. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to like rein in your unhingedness. And I know a lot of people are like, we love you just the way you are. And like, it's okay if you interrupt, like we get it, we can follow along. But like, realistically, it's hard to like be okay with being so unhinged and so like sporadic and chaotic and then be like, people will love it though. But also how do I rein this in and make it like consumable? It's, it's a ongoing battle for me. Let me ask you a couple questions. You want me to build a house? You want me to draw a house? I want you to draw <laughs> the house after this specifically. Okay. And we'll just give you a blank piece of paper. Do you, have you ever cleaned your house on Adderall? Have you ever taken oh it to clean? Oh my God. Yes, of course. Of course. Yes. Is it the cleanest thing ever? After? Yes. Um, it's, it's no, because mm -hmm. no, it's, it's like I get hyper fixated on, I'm like, oh my God, that one closet I always said I would organize. And then I organize that closet for three hours and then I leave and I didn't, I didn't do the dishes, the laundry or make my bed like I wanted to. I organized my fucking lipsticks by like height. You know, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, like, no, like I didn't, I didn't clean the fucking house. Like, no. It took me a second to get the, the image or, of the lipstick. Yeah. Or I'll be like, ah, oh, I'll do a Q and A on Instagram. Like, <laughs> and it's like, your story is that, that's like just yeah, so many fucking like, little like. And I really, I, do, I, I don't do Adderall anymore because like, I just genuinely was like not well and like I don't drink water to begin with and that shit makes you mm. so dehydrated I would wake up and my like lips would be like like crusted shut like it's just not a vibe for like my face body or overall anything so I don't I really haven't taken it like a year or so but like to do things to like whatever and I'm just yeah I just it's not it doesn't you're in the anti-Adderall club I'm not anti-Adderall I I love Adderall when I'm like abusing it but like <sighs> just to like have a little fun which is probably not I shouldn't say this on that podcast everyone's like you're breeding bad whatever but I mean like I just genuinely I've never been on it properly as a doctor implied and I know so many people people in my family that have like done it the right way and when you do it the right way it can be a really beautiful thing I just <laughs> never did it the right way and so I was always just unhinged as fuck and it, I feel like it made me more annoying okay that's fair I love that you used beautiful and Adderall in the same sentence like it can be it can, it can be, be beautiful. beautiful I have some friends when they take it I'm like content Kim for example she is a really good focuser and it does her it does good for her right right yeah. there are some people who you're like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up I have friends who literally if they know I, and this is forever girl. this is I'm talking about when I'm in my early 20s I just got out of college all my friends were 27 28 I was 21 22 fresh in Nashville and like still had like you know 
know, like Adderall for my friends in college, right? And I, I didn't even have to take that much. I'd take like a, t like a tenner, like mm -hmm. a 10 milligram. And my, I have friends who literally would be like, I don't want to, and, and I'm not being funny. They'd be like, I don't want to be around you if you took Adderall. Like, it, it's just, you're like, you're so fucking annoying. And I love you, Shannon, so much I do, but like, it's so annoying. So when you have like your real friends telling you that kind of stuff too, you're like, oh, they fucking like meant that. Like, ow, that hurt. Like, I, am I kind of annoying? And then like when you do an episode like on Adderall and then you like go back and listen to it because a thousand people were like, you didn't shut the fuck up. You didn't let them talk. You interrupted them way more than you even normally do. And I go back and listen to that and I'm physically cringing, texting the person being like, I'm so sorry. I owe you a, like a redo. Like this is just so embarrassing to listen to. Like when you do that, you're like, mm maybe this isn't the drug for me. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's maybe not. Maybe this is like what I should not should be doing. So I have a question for you. Do you re-listen to every episode you do? No. Now that I have my beautiful, stunning, amazing, talented producer, Courtney, she edits the thing and like she'll, she sends me every episode to review. And every once in a while, if I can't remember what I talked about and I need to make edits or whatever, sure, I'll listen to it. But for the most part, like, I, like I should re-listen to this one because I'm like I'm really outing myself about talking about drugs but also it's just me being straight up and honest so I'm like I probably won't re-listen to this one okay but you it doesn't come out and you don't go on a walk and listen to it no but the one that that I had like a hundred thousand people be like this is like so embarrassing you wouldn't let that person talk I went back and listened to that one because I was like there's me denial always I was like they're literally fucking haters the haters hey haters and I like went and listened to it but you know anytime that many people are saying the same thing you're like I'm sure there's some truth to it and I like went back and listened and was like mortified, like texted the person and apologized. And of course she was so nice. I was like, no, don't be silly. I loved it. I had so much fun. And I was like, that is so like, I, and I remember specifically her being like, my mom can't wait to listen to this. And I remember thinking, I bet her mom was like, my daughter didn't even talk like this. You know, I was just like, I felt so bad. I just really felt like selfish and, and rude and just not, I didn't like it. I didn't like that version of myself. And I was like, Oh, what do you know? I was on fucking Adderall. <laughs> when always though. Yeah. I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. One, do you, Alex interviewing me now? I'm like, <laughs> I love it. Oh, this happens. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I love it. It's great. This is always free flowing. Sometimes you don't let me forget my second question. This is when an Adderall would help. Cause I would know the second question. Oh, I would forget it. All right. The first one's about drinking and the second one's about people being right. Okay. That's, okay. So that's the topic. Got it. One, so, sometimes I see you drinking before an episode or during an episode. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about that versus doing one with like coffee? Does it matter at all? There's no difference with you. Um, no, 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 no. When I drink, if I drink, I'm definitely, I, I'm, I, I'm not that different when I'm drunk. You've seen me drunk. Mm -hmm. I'm just not that different. And everyone my whole life has said that it's, it's like the, it's like the one nugget of positivity I can pull about myself. Like I, no one's like, you're crazy. You're annoying. You're louder. Like I'm just genuinely people have like handed me car keys before I'm in like, huh, get Rachel home safe. And I'm like, what? I'm <laughs> plastered. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what do you mean? Get Rachel home safe. I'm fucking splitzed, but I just don't act like that different, you know? And so drinking on the podcast I bet if I had to guess I would just be like looser so I might say more slash I might talk a little slower that might be great and I bet I might interrupt people a little bit more coffee I producer Courtney and I just had this conversation I'm highly affected by caffeine okay. like when I take you know my doll has caffeine in it when I take it daily yeah when I take my doll like I I literally feel like I just fucking did a line of meth is that how you do meth I think it's in I don't know gemstones Jim Stones? Jim. I did meth by accident one time. Thought no. it was Molly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. A bad time. Tulum. Bathroom attendant. My fault. That's on me. Mm -hmm. That's on you. That's, that's on me. That's but I on got you. tested afterwards because I was so perplexed by the drug. Like <laughs> I knew I wasn't on what I thought I was on because I was like trying to take Molly for the first time, which also bad experience. I gotta stop taking drugs. <laughs> yes. and, and the lesson is. The lesson is drugs and I don't get along, but I just like wanna try them all, you know? And so. Stick to my doll. Uh, yeah. My, <laughs> stick my doll. It's my on the counter. <laughs> my drug of choice, my doll. Um, so yeah, yeah, I just, um, I went and got tested and they were like, oh, you did meth. And I was like, no fucking way. And they're like, yes fucking way. <laughs> I was from, like, what? The, from the bathroom attendant in Tulum. And so that just yeah, was Yeah, he was not... like, Molly, Molly, cocaine, Molly, Molly. And I was like, I'll do Molly. Yeah, Molly. And, and Molly. then like, and then it's crazy. It's so crazy because like I had self-service here. All I had to Google like was, I don't know, like what does Molly look like? Mm. It, it wouldn't have looked like that. It would no. have been wrong. Like when I explained what it looked like, everyone's like, that's not what Molly looked like. And it looks like, and I was like, I never taken Molly before. They were like, you should have asked. And I'm like, <laughs> Janice was like, you look trustworthy. Paper towel and Molly. Perfect. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little dab. Yeah. No, it's just meth. A little meth. Anyways. Trip. So, um, no. yeah. If, if, so caffeine, I'm highly affected by caffeine. So coffee, like for instance, this is 
halfway full still. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel like I buy caffeine free Midol because when I take Midol with the caffeine in it, I feel like like wired, like so wired. I'm just like really affected. But my best friend Taylor drinks coffee before she goes to bed, could have like an espresso shot after dinner. And she's like, and I'm like, I would be up till four in the morning trying to like remember how to do the Pythagorean theorem. Really? No, I'll be like on TikTok. But like I would be up till four in the morning. If, okay, so so first of all, can I just say this to the guys that listen? Mm -hmm. My doll, I've gotten Graham on it. I have given almost every boyfriend I know my doll. It's the best. It's like back pain, bloating, fatigue, headache. It's well, you know what it is, which guys are totally fine with taking. It's a goodies powder. It's exactly what it is. I love goodies. Yeah, powder. Taylor does too. And so it's, it's a goodies powder. I can't get past the taking the powder part, but it's a goodies powder. So like they see mine, they're like, I ain't taking that. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Take it because it, it, it's like the bet. It's way better than Tylenol or ibuprofen. It's, it's an better. Advil with a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's hundred percent. And people, and for a hangover. That's, that's when I tell, that's when I've given it to my boyfriends. So yeah. That's the dream come true. Yeah, I was is. like, when I figured that out, I was like, no shit. The time that I took the Adderall on the podcast was, uh, the, the fateful time was, I was so hungover mm -hmm. and Courtney brought me Dramamine so kind. And then I had this like crusted up like lint ball ridden Adderall that I found at the bottom of my purse and I was like this will help <laughs> that's the one the thing about Adderall and a hangover is you just focus on the hangover yeah, yeah you're like, like yeah, I'm hungover and then you're just literally like I'm literally sitting here thinking about the hangover that's my so heads. fucking true oh. you're just more focused on being hungover it was not it was not great it was just I really do owe that precious girl a redo podcast. <laughs> this poor, I'm going to go listen to the episode. Oh, it's tough. Um, okay, oh. the second one, it was about being right. All right, so you said like 100,000 people are like, you wouldn't shut up on this episode. Yeah. And obviously you're familiar with hater comments. Sure. But you're like. No, me? Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone loves you and nobody hates on you. Ever. Um, welcome to the internet. But you're, so what does it take? Like, does it take the masses saying one thing to you for you to listen? Yeah, and I think more people should, you know, listen. Like, I, I just, I think like, obviously if some, if everyone is telling you like, like on Twitter, after I was on that TV show, everyone was telling me that I looked like a horse and I was like, that's not nice. But I'll tell you what I did do. I did get new veneers. Um, but like, like that, this is, this is, that's a bad example. I'm saying like, if everyone was saying like, I fucking hate your hair, like that's just so stupid. Like I wouldn't listen to that. Everyone, so many people love to comment like you and your boyfriend are not good together. I'm like, you literally shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. cause that's just like a dumb hater comment. But if everyone is saying something specific about an episode and it has to do with another person and something I'm doing to that person, I can't imagine that it doesn't have some some validity to it or at least enough to make me want to go back and listen to it to see if I can see it for myself and I did I still wasn't I was like no I fucking didn't that's just how I talk we were just having conversations free-flowing conversations no it was it, like I said it was so cringe I wanted to fucking write her mom an apology letter you okay so so okay all right so you use distinction but yeah. if everyone because sometimes you go in there and you're like oh of course the typical comments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but sometimes there's scenarios it's funny I'm actually getting a haircut today because this happened to me Everyone's like, it's just a little long. Did you ask your actual friends? Yes. And, and were they like, it's a little long? Yes. Okay. Well then, then that's fair. Cause I, I, with the teeth thing, I was like, I was like, I look fucking fabulous. I mean, I was like, I'll fucking cry. I know. <laughs> What's everyone talking about? And then like all my friends being friends and knowing that I had like just paid for a fucking Buick to be put in my mouth were like, mm. they look fine to me. And then like. I like went back to my dentist and I was like, I think they might be a little too long. And he was like, the teeth were too long. <laughs> Hair too long, teeth too long. I was like, I think we need to shave these up, these bad boys up a little bit. So yeah, I mean, those are the ones that like sting because it's like your appearance. But if you can like fix it, I mean, sure. Like give, ask your, I say, I say in instances with physical appearance, like ask your friends, but like fucking people are fucking brutal, man. Like. So they are not nice, <laughs> but it's, but these have been like really nice in the DMS. They're not comments on posts. They're like, you, it's just a little long, Alex. Oh, I'm see, like, is I, it? I <laughs> would fully take, I would be like, that's okay. That's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. 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 I, I always listen to people that are like, I love you, but and, and actually I really respect people that message me that about interrupting. I get, Oh, New York. I thought it was Courtney, and I was like, I, did, I looked right at her. That's so rude of me. We we both looked right at you. It was like a fucking like bullhorn. We both just looked right at Courtney as if she just made that noise from her little body. I thought it was like a like a little. I was like, oh my god, Sorry, such Courtney. a small person, such a tiny person making such a large sound. Um, no, I yeah, I I think those are people that are nice. They're like, I love you. I get nice comments all the time. Like this episode I did with Mike, people were like, I could really tell you were letting him talk. It was really sweet. I probably will not get these messages with you because I do feel like I've interrupted you. 
a good bit, but we also just ping off each other. This was us when we went out to eat that time and we were like at the bar. We were just like, burr, burr, burr. And so <laughs> just like lighting it up. I like feed off people's energy. Like me and my friend Anna Grace, who, you know, like mm. we just are like burr, with, when, we're, when we're with each other. So. I really love Anna Grace. She is wonderful. She is wonderful. She is just a literal ball of sunshine. I, what I want to listen to is something about her choosing friends and shedding the fat on the oh, friends. Oh, yes. She is like, it, it's, I, it's so wonderful that she's a podcast because I have just been, I've had the cheat code to life by being her best friend for the past five years because she is the best advice giver, the best like breaker downer of situations. Like she's just perfect for that. So to have a podcast where she's just like openly giving everyone these like tools and tactics for life, like you guys are fucking welcome because mm. I have many, a breakdown so and producer Courtney knows she's just like I found producer recording through Anna Grace she was like you have got to use her and I was like no no, no 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 and like my life is forever changed because of that too so she's just like the best those are she, good friends to have she's the best that's the best and was gonna ask because it just jogged my memory about Miami Miami and then I thought of Graham because we obviously were with Graham a lot of people because I'm like trying to remember some of the questions that are on here uh people want to know which I, I I guess I'm so southern I was like you didn't get married that young but people were like what are your thoughts about getting married young because how old were you when you got married to Graham well okay should should know right off the bat we're gonna do math okay I'm yeah. 29 don't ask me to do it eight seven six. I guess I got married at 25 or maybe I was 26. That's no, I was 25 and then I turned 26 that July. So I, I was 25. I don't think that's that young. But up here? Oh, here in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll tell people and they're like, really? So are you 35? It's so funny. But you know why I think that is? I think people see you as like a young, successful woman. So no way someone could have gotten married and still be this young, independent, successful woman. Because you do come across very independent successful fun driven like so they're like no way that girl could have a husband bogging her down and it's like it's not always like that like you could just you know meet the love of your life decide that you want to be with them forever get married and then like also still be your person like yourself can can happen yeah and <laughs> i i know people every time i say i'm married at the beginning now yeah. that my relationship's a little bit more out there right i think some people understand it but right out of the gates they're like boring it's got to be boring. Oh. He's got to be like, I, they, I think they assume I don't like him or why? I just don't think they understand it. I think they're like, well, who's he? Like what? Like how? Maybe not that I don't like him. Maybe that was a bit harsh on it. They the, want it to make sense so bad. And it doesn't, you're like, it doesn't need to make sense to you. It makes sense to us. Like, but they are like, I don't get this. And I want this to make sense to my small brain. And it doesn't, they don't compute. It doesn't make sense. So like, they must not like each other. I see that with people on the internet with my relationship. They're like, eh, eh, and I'm like, you don't know it. You don't get it. You don't, I don't give a fuck what your small mindedness thinks about it. And I can't, there's, there's no um, platform where I can show you. Right. You, uh, it's true. I want to show you what love is like, but I, I don't know the way to do it. Unless yeah. you're at dinner with me. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Like I watched you and Graham even just at the club, and Graham doesn't drink, and you and I were like literally making fucking quadruples, and just I was like, let's do this fun game where we just chug the bottle for like three seconds, okay? And you're like, perfect. Um, so I and like I feel like I saw you guys interacting, and maybe that was like a nice platform for me to see because you guys couldn't have been on more separate playing fields in that moment. But like I was like. I get this. I get them. I see them. I read them. I get this. This is like beautiful and makes sense to me. Thank you. Because anything, honestly, if you can like be with someone that also is just like watching you drink and like dance at the club and they're sober, like you should marry that person regardless. Well, and the thing, when we got married, we both had corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. He drank. Okay. And we lived in Newport Beach, California. Fast forward to now, he doesn't drink. I, our whole life's on the internet. Yep. <laughs> he is back. He's doing something completely different. He's back in school and right. he's got a job in like social justice. Like our lives are, have completely changed. That is a wow. Yeah. And we had to go through that together. And it was like, that was the most challenging thing totally. to say, like, let's stay ourselves. But like, Hey, you down to do this like crazy little journey thing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And you guys have completely changed what you're doing on the outside. So it's like wild that you're like, we still got us. Like we're still us and we still got us. So let's still like make this stay the same. Yes. And it wasn't natural. Like it took, it was like maybe four months ago we had to stop. And right. I was like, we're totally different now. Like, and we, and it was like a month of just like, Oh my, you know, they say marriage is hard. And it was like really fun to be like, 
what are we, who are Graham and Alex now? Right. It's not what happened when we got married. Right. And we got to like recompute. Was it when you recomputed, were you just like afterwards, you're like, holy fuck, I'm so glad we did that. Anna Grace kind of calls it like an autopsy. Like you do an autopsy of the relationship or like your past year or whatever. Like, did you guys take like inventory and do an autopsy of Graham and Alex and then decide like, we need to we need to re reconvene somehow. Yeah, we call yes, that's funny. She says autopsy. We called it an audit. And uh -oh. What it was, he was trying to be who I thought he was trying to be who he thought I wanted him to be. Got it. And I was trying to be me, but also a little bit of like, but I think Graham wants this. Right. We realized, wait, the only thing we both want is you to be you and me to be me. Oh, yeah, that does. I and then we were like, oh, oh okay. Oh my God, duh. I went, I, I went through like a phase where at, when James and I first started dating, I was like trying to be, I was like, well, I, you know, cause he was like, oh, my mom and dad listened to the podcast about Barcelona where you met me. And I was like, oh no, my God. I said, we fucked our way through hotels.com. <laughs> what? Your parents listen to this? And then he's like, no, my mom listened to that one. And my dad listened to the next one. I'm like, the one where I said I was tripping balls on Molly? Fuck. And so like, I... I was like, okay, like maybe I should say a little bit. And I like, actually I talked to James. I was like, I just feel like they, they like if your parents are watching me on social media and like, I just feel like I, I don't want to change myself, but I feel like I might need to tone it down a little bit. And he was like, the best thing you can do. My family like loves you. And the best thing you could do is absolutely do not change a single thing about you, which I was like, oh, that's so nice. He's just saying that. But like, then like another time, like months later, I was like, oh, I don't know. I feel like your parent. And he's like, Shannon my parents like you be you be yourself they've seen you as you I've seen you as you stop don't put yourself into some like whatever posh bubble you think you need to be in for them like stop like be yourself that's the best thing you can do and when the person that like you like adore and like and, and is saying this to you you're like you can't help but believe them they wouldn't be like I would have hoped that he would tell me if he didn't like something I was doing and he was straight up like if you change they will like you less like they don't like they really love who you are now and I'm like oh I just have to keep being myself. Like sometimes we get ourselves so worked up to try to like, you just like fix into fit into this box. We think they want us in. And they're like, no, 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 no. We married you. Like he married Alex for Alex and all the things that comes with Alex, like the changes, the progression, the growth. So like, yeah, that's, did it make you, did it make you believe in people like a little bit more when his parents were like, we like you for the fuck your ways through hotels. I'm like that, you know, do his, you want to say that to a parent? No, no. And you know what? His parents have never come out and said like, that was so funny. That time you said that, like maybe they cringed a little bit, but, but the fact that they, it made me love people more and yes, believe in the human race more that maybe they cringe when they heard that, but they don't treat me any differently. They still like, like love me being with their son. And I can tell I'm not a fucking idiot. I think I could read the room if they didn't mm -hmm. like, I'd be like, well, his parents do not like me and I think his parents really like me so it's like it's one of those things where yeah, yeah you're like oh my gosh never did I think that I could like be with this person who literally lives in London and his parents are so like wonderful and fun and beautiful and posh and like they see me and they're like yeah this is great because you know what they want their son to be happy so they see their son being happy and that makes them happy I mean, they don't have to date me you know right so like that yeah it, it restores your faith in humanity that you don't have to like change yourself for because I think a lot of people don't like always just change yourselves for their person. They like, there's so many other factors. Parents matter. Like I, like with this podcast, people are always like, what do you, cause someone asked me, what does Graham think about you talking about their sex, your sex life? What does your mom think about it? What does your family think about it? What, what do people think about you talking about you and Graham's sex life on like the thing? And you said, Graham obviously doesn't have social media, so he doesn't care. But like, did you ever care? Were you ever like, this makes me feel like I'm worried or were you just like, I don't fucking care. They can deal with it. No, I was, I, it, this is how I learned the lesson was there would be clips of me and I'd be like, Oh, I'm talking about my boobs or something. Right. And I'd be like, okay, so I'm going to go home for Thanksgiving this past Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and I got to see his family. Yeah. And I was like, I got two options. One, I can go ahead and change and never have these clips up. Right. Right. Or I can give them a chance to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm Give like the chance. Why would I decide that they hate me before they decide? Right. Yeah. It's so, oh my God. So true. You're deciding for them already. And I think that's what I did. I was like, your parents are going to think I'm so crass, so gross, so tacky. And he's like, they never said any, they don't know. They don't, they don't think that. And it's like, why do you decide for the, so the quote you just said is so true. You're yeah. deciding before them that they hate you. Like that can't be good juju going into it. Like, no, no. <laughs> like we, you did the exact same thing I did, but neither of us actually did it. We were almost going to hold ourselves back. Yeah. Just assuming what someone 100%. thought. 100%. And you get home and they're like, oh my God, I haven't missed an episode. That is so funny. And you're, you're like, like, 
I almost just like dimmed my light right. to protect you. Yeah. And in fact, you like it. Right. Totally. And that goes back to too, like being unhinged and how I'm like navigating being unhinged. And I'm like, I really do get like, you know, you said like for every one negative comment, there's 200 nice ones. And like, I really do. I get so many more comments. People have been like, I felt like I was just sitting in the room with my best friend. Then people being like, shut the fuck up twat. I'm like, oh, so like you got to. This year, I have been trying to pay more attention to those people, respond to those people, like give my energy to those people because, yeah, I'm fucking unhinged, but it is who I am. And what, what like, what's like, I've made it this far. What's the number one way you think you're unhinged? I just, I think like I can't, I, 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 ta- I just have to talk, 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 talk. Like I'm unhinged in my like storytelling. But then like, I, like when I first met James and he, God, oh, it's so awful. He listened to that episode. Uh, the one that was like talking about having a one night stand and, and we had just met in Barcelona, really liked each other. And it was called uh, the bedless Dutchman. And it was about this like Dutch guy that I slept with that like just stayed in my bed too long. And I like <laughs> was convinced he was homeless and was just like using me for a like, place to sleep. He was just here for, like way too fucking long. And um, oh. yeah, I, he listened to that one and I, I remember being like so embarrassed so perturbed and then he was like you're such a good storyteller and like that's one of my favorite compliments like when people are like oh I just like you just told that story so well you're such a good storyteller I'm like oh, really so I know that my storytelling although it can be very engaging and you can be like locked in it is like a ping pong that's just like in a fucking tiny glass room and you're just watching it bounce everywhere and then at the end you're like that was kind of entertaining, I guess. I kind of watched it the whole time. But like you and were like, but I'm one. tired. <laughs> like I'm I'm exhausted from having listened to that. But like I did watch it the whole time and did like the end of it. And I want to do it one more time. Maybe I like want another one. One more time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When you're here, like, because you to me seem always energized and very talkative. When you're here on like a Tuesday mm-hmm. at 5 p.m., James is gone. You're alone. Silent. Okay. And are you like, um, I- I'm imagining you doing a lot. No, I recharge in silence. Like I, I just literally sit here quiet. Like I, and like, I could probably like one of the only people I could hang out with is maybe like Taylor and Anna Grace. Cause we'll just like sit there in silence every like 20 minutes. We'll say something, but I couldn't like, like, I don't, I don't like to like do this all day long, like talk like this all day long. Or like if I'm on my stories all day, chances are at night, I'm just like quiet watching TV. Like I definitely recharge like alone and in silence. I'm not always like, go, 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 go. I am go, go, go. And then I just like, so you're not FaceTiming, you're just, you're done. No, you're God, off. no, no, no. It's like, off. like actually if someone will FaceTime me, I'm like, I just, can you just text me? Cause like, I can't, I don't want to FaceTime. I don't have the like energy to FaceTime right now. No, I, I get depleted of the energy, which is how the, it's just the only way I can go to sleep. I have to mm. run my, I'm like a little fucking kid on pixie sticks. Like mm. I have to like run myself out of all the energy by talking all day, doing a podcast, being on my stories, doing a million random little fucking weird things, ping pong ball, ping pong ball. So I can go to sleep. Cause if I am just relaxed all day, I'll stay up till four in the morning. Cause I haven't depleted oh. my energy. I, I like have to get it out. What's your con? Like, do you get angry? Do you get mad? Do you get sad? My, what's, what's the one thing? Like, what's your like um, opposite? Like, you're you're you seem like a very supportive friend. You seem like all of these things. But what's the what's the one? I, I get well, I get mad. Mad. Yeah, I can get mad, but not like at my friends and stuff. I just get mad at things I shouldn't get mad about. Like this lady yelled at me on a plane one time, and I was so mad that I like cr- like cr- angry cried like to myself and was oh. so mad, and I was fixated on it. I talked about this on my podcast. It was like it was like five days later. I was in Cape Town getting a massage, and before the lady walked in, I was thinking about all the stuff I would have said to that lady on the plane, and I was about to get a massage. Mm. like that's crazy to hold on to that like that that anger energy is crazy to hold on to that kind of stuff so like I've tried to like let go and, and uh, me I picked up the phone called Anna Grace I'm like how do I let go of this anger oh. like how do you like let go of it and you know she like walked me through and have her the podcast and give her tips because like I yeah that would be a con that I like I can really which is why I've been in this line of work is hard sometimes and why I had to stop looking at reddit because like I would see one thing I would see a thousand mean things about me right but one would stick out and I would just like hyper be so angry about it and get so mad about it and hold on to the resentment and madness about it and it's like that's just so stupid day one barstool don't read reddit yeah, oh, yeah, oh my God. Do okay. not. And what do we do? I'm like, Reddit you're like, backslash you're like, Alex Bennett. How do you spell R? Is it two Ds or what? Yeah, no, I mean. Do I need an account? No, I'm reading it. <laughs> I'm reading it. Oh, yeah. I mean, the people are always like, do you ever comment on Reddit? I'm like, no, because my dumb ass, the first thing I did, it was like, sign up to Reddit. I'm like, Shannon Noel Ford. <laughs> <laughs> That's my username. Like, <laughs> But if you got you, and then you're the one that says nice comments about yourself, yeah. and you're like, 
Yeah. At least use an alias. No, 100%. <laughs> back when I would read Reddit, actually, if anyone would say anything nice, everyone would be like, hi, Shannon. <laughs> and <laughs> I'd always your... be reading it like, that's not me. I, I'm reading it, so I'm here. But like, that's not me. Found your burner. And you're like, <laughs> can it just be a nice comment? Nice one. Hi, Shannon's mom. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my mom doesn't even know how to work this shit. But no, I, yeah, I had to. That was, I, I got, like, I always say Reddit's over. Reddit's over, like, last fall has been a very healthy thing for me. Very, very healthy thing. I am with you on that and it's yeah. the best ever because it's, we don't need to know. No, no. I like, I know all the time. I see stuff all the time without Reddit. I don't need to go to the one spot. I know they're saying mean things like that. It's just like, couldn't, you couldn't be dumber. No. Like I, like I, I just put on my Instagram the other day. I, I was like, you know, um, I, I don't look at my podcast reviews just because it's kind of takes a minute to get there. You have to like go to Apple, go to podcast, go all the way down to your thing. It's, it's like a thing, right? Yes. So every week I'm not, I look at like maybe the chart and see where I fall on the chart, but I don't look at, at my reviews. I just, I just assume they're fantastic. Five stars. <laughs> so well, I started know. getting this, these DMs and all, the DMs were literally, they were like, do you ever check your Apple reviews? You dumb bitch. Everyone <laughs> hates you. And what did I do? I was like, I should go check those out. Like, no, uh, Here's a crazy thought. They're not going to be good based on that. You know what right. I mean? So like I, I, I did what they wanted me to do. I saw something mean and went right to where I knew would be mean. Like why would like flies go to shit? Like I don't want to be the fly that flies to shit. Like I don't want to, I'm not a fly. I don't want to land on shit. So when someone comes to me and says something mean, that should be a, a like, oh, hey, that's going to be bad for your mental health. Don't go there. Do not go don't, there. Don't don't be the fly flying to the shit. Don't just, go there. That's a, I like the fly to shit analogy. Yeah, just, just laugh like, and be like, delete. Yeah, stupid. No. So yeah, it's it's it, it, it. That was hard for me because innately inside of me, and I'm not speaking for you. The ego inside of me, the touch of narcissism inside of me like I just like you know someone saying something about you so you're intrigued like someone tells you there's a whole page where they're doing nothing but talking about you you disregard the part where it's all mean and you're like okay everyone's talking about me in one spot hold on and then you're like it's all mean but you're like but everyone's devoting their lives to talking about me so like they are fans you know mm -hmm. what I mean like they hate me but there's a fine line between love and hate so like you probably loved me at one point. I didn't give you something you needed back from me in whatever that was. I don't know. And then you began to hate me. But like, if you're talking about me every day on a forum, like you fucking love me, dude. Like you do. So you love to hate me. There's love somewhere in the equation. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, but the, 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 the ego inside of me wanted to see this place where everyone was talking about Shannon. And then I one day realized like, you're going to this place where everyone's talking about Shannon, but it's horrible. So Go, that's not a good place. Don't go there. It's a Shannon place, but it's not a good place. My it was hard. Our producer told us one day, she was like, silence is feedback. So if people are saying nothing, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. Be, I mean, be one or the other. My friend Paige, she was really helpful. I called her because I'd never had people talk in my old relationship, which no one really knew anything about. And like, and that had plenty of things wrong with it. No one talked about that relationship. And this was the first time that people were talking about my relationship. And that's when I reached out to my friend and I was like, I've never, people always talk about you and your relationships. I never realized how this would affect me. It's really upsetting me because I'm so happy in this relationship. Never been happier. It's never been healthier. Like, what do I do? She's like, ooh, ooh, you've reached the point. You got to get, you got to, no, you have to promise yourself that you'll get off and I and I was like that was d different for me to like see them talking about like my relationship it, it, like it hit different it was harder what why do you think it was hard because you wanted to protect James or I just I just was like I I'm so happy and they're saying the most horrible things about me and like like they're just saying horrible things about him and me and us together and I just like it was really you know what it was it was that they kept comparing me to his exes and I like I don't do that that's like very unhealthy for me because like I've had issues with comparison in the past where I've just like really like compared myself to like women and I've gotten so good at not doing that in like the field I'm in, like being an influencer, like living my life on the internet. Like I, I don't follow people that like upset me or like make me feel like lesser than. Mm -hmm. And I sure as shit don't go around following on my ex, my boyfriend's gorgeous ex-girlfriends, mm -hmm. you know? And so they were literally like putting side by sides of our photos and being like, how could he go from this to her? Just like really cruel stuff. And I remember being like, my my like self-esteem I was just like crumbling and cracking and, and that again shows my ego and like you know, insecurities but I just was like this is like so so hurtful like it's just it's, it's a different level it just like hurt differently I didn't know how to explain it I was just like this is not nice so by by like not engaging with it did it get better yeah because like the people that follow me on Instagram that like are in my DMs every day they say the literal like I've never seen you look happier I've followed you for five years there's such a glow about you my real friends and my family my 
mom literally how embarrassing is it? Oh, love you mom if you're listening she's probably not but like my mom was like cr- James got up to go to the bathroom at this dinner we were out with my mom my dad and James and she started crying saying how happy she was she's like I just it's a mother's dream she's like I'm not gonna cry but like okay. just like he's just so genuine my mom my dad was like Sharon Kate please not here don't do that. <laughs> come on like we're <laughs> real, real it in real it in. and I was like mommy's in the bathroom that's so sweet but like he's really gonna be like right back please don't be crying but like my own mother's like crying because she just spent five days with this man that she's just like I couldn't be happier you're with someone like this you know and so I'm like that's all so good like yes yeah, so immediately so when I stopped reading that stuff immediately I like was like I cannot believe I let that affect me that is just the craziest thing but I will say the same person Paige was like you can't engage with these pages but the second you don't have these pages listen but you're probably not firing on all cylinders like it, keeps, it means you're relevant you know and it's it's that's fucked up to say and maybe she wouldn't even want me to say that but like it does it, it proves relevancy like it just does when people are talking shit yes and being so, you want them to feel there's something some type about of way. it where you're like okay yeah it's a feeling ambivalence would be the worst right right right. but if you feel hate or love i'm in yeah 100 percent. and it's the I don't know if you're a Swifty like me and producer Courtney, but um, the the song I Forgot That You Existed by uh, mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, it's like, it's not love, it's not hate, it's indifference. I don't want the third one. No. I don't want people to feel indifferent about me. I do want them to love or hate me. Well, so A hate comment is still a comment. 100%. And we just, we're just tallying comments. I don't really care what they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So, no, agreed. Um, one thing I think that James does for you, do you agree, is like, this is so... Um, if we both had plates, I just came onto yours to eat your food when I said this, but... Like, do you think he, cause when, when the next morning after meeting you, you and him in the club, Graham and I were like, okay, he's a thinker. Cause like I asked him, I was like, what's your totally. five year plan? And he's like, got it. And I'm like, okay, cool. But you guys obviously even live in different, I mean, different worlds combining. Totally. Does he make you think and elevate and like, does he pull you? Yes. Because if someone asked me, what's your five year plan? I'm the quintessential person. He's like, I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and just like living my life. Like the last five years have been great. So the next five years gotta be fun. Like, and he's like, okay, so year one, this is like, yes, he is that. And so, yeah, he, elev- he elevates me in general. Like he makes me, and I, listen, Anna Grace has told me I'm a manifesting generator and that I really need to be careful what I manifest because mm. I, it'll come true. Me, I'm like, I win the lottery. I win the lottery. I win the lottery. Okay, perfect. Yep. Set it on air. <laughs> but like whenever my ex and I broke up and I was, she was like, you gotta be very specific, write down, manifest what you want. I'm like, okay. I was like, I want this motherfucker to be so busy that I'm triggered that I'm not busy enough. And that he makes me like want to work harder because he's so busy that I'm like, I should be busy or what am I doing? Because in the line of work that I'm in, I'll do a lot for one day. And then maybe the next two days, like I don't technically have like real quote unquote work to do. That's a fucking lie. I absolutely could be working, grinding, creating, like doing things, right? Like even if it's like back end stuff, but like I wanted to be triggered by someone that was so busy and driven that I wanted to be more. And so I said that. And then I also was like, and I like don't need him to be like breathing down my neck. Like a little distance is like fine. Like I want, oh, I'm oh, like, I'm careful. Like, and I was like, you gotta be careful. And I'm like, damn it. And distance. so <laughs> distance. I'm like, I just like a little bit of a distance in a relationship just cause I just like don't want him on top of me. Yeah. So anyways, that, that was, yeah, I just, I really manifested someone just like him and then it came to fruition which is fantastic but he he elevates me which is what I wanted I wanted someone I wrote on there I want someone to challenge me a lot of the times I'm like oh this and this and he's like I don't think that's right at all and I'm like oh why don't and then we have these like great conversations about why it's not right like I mean I just or his opinion on it and my opinion on it so yeah I mean like he challenges and absolutely elevates me seems like you both do that like I was like they do that to each other that's really cool to see oh thanks yeah I was like dang I got like that, that upward happy. yeah well, thanks. Okay, guys, we I just we just stopped. I I'm like me gets compliment. I'm like, well, that's a wrap. Um, <laughs> you and Graham were lovely. Uh, no, you and Graham. I will end by saying you and Graham. We separately said the same thing about you guys. It just again, like I said, you guys are just in totally totally different realms in this club, but still seem like the most perfect couple, like interacting, which Thank just you. is really cool to see that. And then we saw you guys the next day randomly at dinner which was funny we were just all at the same place for dinner and then y'all were leaving we were and sat there for five more minutes and I didn't want you to leave I was like yeah, I know y'all just finished dinner but can't you just I know you and Graham just sit down and he's like also he's low-key really funny not outwardly like doesn't throw it in your face like I'm like begging everyone to think I'm funny I'm like I'm funny I'm funny I'm funny <laughs> right 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 and he's like so low-key funny one-liner me. quiet he's quiet yes, yes yes quiet sneaky funny um okay I'm sorry to wrap it up here but we <laughs> simply have made this podcast episode a little too long and you've got to go get your hair done which is gonna look fabulous and just a 
just a little bit shorter. Just three inches shorter. Just a little bit shorter. Just like you guys wanted. Okay. <laughs> Add some layers, make it shorter. Love it. Um, I love you. Thank I you for coming you. to my podcast. Alex Bennett, you are a gem. What is your Instagram? Where can we find you? I've never really written it like this, but I feel like really important ones too. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm um, at just Alex Bennett on TikTok and um, Instagram. Okay. And follow me and girl pod. And that's it. That's Yay. where you find me. I love you. Don't follow me on Twitter because I'm not funny. I don't even have a Twitter. Yeah, I do. I, don't, I haven't got on it in years. Mm. Mm. Eh. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>